just discuss the idea here about the stichometric air fuel ratio that is a theoretical air fuel ratio so various terminologies are used for the amount of air or oxygen used in combustion suppose we have 80 percent of stichometric air it means that we are using 80 percent of theoretical air or simply 80 percent of air naturally we have 20 percent deficiency of air and when we say that we have 133 percent of stichometric ratio it means that we have oxygen is 133 percent more theoretically we have 33 percent more oxygen that is the excess oxygen so to include this we defined here one ratio that is called as air fuel ratio which is simply defined as the mass of air upon the mass of fuel reverse of this one will be the fuel air ratio which is defined as mass of fuel upon mass of air we have a relation between the fuel air ratio and theoretical and the actual actual can be any one year will be 80 percent or will be 133 percent for the present example so how much excess air or how much less air you can supply than comparison to stichometric will be called as actual so here the term phi is called as equivalence ratio this ratio is defined as air fuel ratio for stichometric divided by air fuel ratio actual so here for example we are using here the actual air ratio is 80 percent then we have phi value will be equal to 1 divided by 0.8 will be 1.25 and if you are using the actual value equal to 133 so we have phi value will be equal to 1 divided by 1.33 point 0.7 now what is it clearly indicate that if we are supplying the 80 percent of the air naturally we are deficient deficient means what we have a less quantity of air normally when we have less quantity of air carbon monoxide will be present and if we have 133 that is air required for theoretical combustion but you are supplying the more air naturally some part of oxygen get burned that will be still present in the final products of combustion so whenever we have O2 present it will give the idea about the excess air fuel ratio in the other word it is defined as that will be the fuel air ratio actual divided by fuel air ratio theoretical in other word we will say here that a value of phi equal to 1 it means that we have air fuel ratio theoretical is same as air fuel ratio actual we have phi equal to 1 we have a stichometric air fuel ratio and if we are using the stichometric air fuel ratio we have a maximum energy release from the fuel if your value of phi is less than one it means that we are firing more air as compared to the stichometric then this ratio will be less than one if you are firing more air is that we have a lean mixture lean mixture means more quantity of air as compared to stichometric we have a excess air in that case oxygen will be present and if we have the denominator is less it means that we are using mass of air by mass of fuel ratio is less than the theoretical value in that case we have more quantity of fuel less quantity of air it will be called as the rich mixture rich mixture means more quantity of air lean mixture means less quantity of air if we have the rich mixture and naturally when we have a rich mixture and we are supplying the less air fuel ratio than the theoretical the combustion is incomplete if the combustion is incomplete then we have a presence of carbon dioxide in there so we required a rich mixture is more quantity of fuel during starting normally when we are doing the starting in number of cases we apply the choke choke will stop the passage of air and more quantity of fuel will come thereby it will give the rich mixture then during idling we required a rich mixture during the maximum power we required rich mixture suppose we have a theoretical air fuel ratio value that is air fuel ratio theoretical stichometric let we have a reference equal to 15 then for starting we required this value will be around 8 it is less than this value for idling it will be approximately equal to 10 and maximum power it will be equal to 12 
So starting we required a very large fail to burn idling whenever we stop on the signal we are using the air fail ratio equal to 10 so and during the maximum power we required this value equal to 12 whereas for economy the power is not interested we required this ratio is approximately equal to 16 to 18 Uh, exhaust dew point temperature that you want to calculate for water vapor anytime you want to calculate the dew point temperature then first of all you have to calculate the mole fraction of water vapor in the exhaust product we have just seen the example that will be the number of moles of h2o divided by total number of mole of the exhaust product second step is to calculate the partial pressure using the dalton's law so you have to use the mole fraction not the mass fraction volume base multiplied by p atmospheric once you know this value calculate the saturation temperature using the steam table and using that we can calculate dew point temperature and if you are given the relative humidity then you have to calculate the value of pv as rh multiplied by p saturation so this concept will be more clear if we'll go for air conditioning rh is defined as pv divided by ps at drivable temperature using the butane that is C4 H10 is burned with air so we have O2 plus 3.76 times N2 this one is combustion chamber and we have here products of combustion which are CO2 H2O nitrogen so first of all we'll calculate here the theoretical air fail ratio so we'll start with c4 10 plus a times o2 plus 3.76 n2 the reactants are whenever you want a complete combustion the carbon must burn into carbon dioxide so we can produce here four times carbon dioxide we have h10 so we have five times h2o it's complete combustion of carbon to carbon dioxide hydrogen to water vapor plus we have some p times nitrogen so this reaction we can write down very quickly without writing here bcd so we'll just compare here carbon is already balanced here hydrogen is already balanced we have to just balance the oxygen so only in one step we can find out here the theoretical air fuel ratio so this time we have o2 is a here we have o2 this is 4 here we have only o so this will be 5 by 2 we have 4 plus 2.5 that will be 6.5 Secondly, we will balance for P that is for nitrogen and this value of P will be equal to A multiplied by 3.76. So, I will just write here 6.5 multiplied by 3.76. Once you finish this, we will write the reaction here. We have C4 H10 plus 6.5 times O2 plus 3.76 times N2 to give 4 times CO2 plus 5 times H2O and if you want to write down this we can write down this as 24.4 times N2 we want to calculate here the theoretical air fuel ratio so we have mass of air upon the mass of fuel is theoretical is stoichiometric which will be mass of air mass of air you can calculate from here so we have 6.5 multiplied by one number of mole of oxygen plus 3.76 mole of nitrogen multiplied by molecular mass of air which one is 29 6.5 one number of mole of oxygen 3.76 number of moles and 29 is the relative molecular mass so we have kilomole divided by kg divided by kilomole 
this is what the this product is done we have one number of mole of butane we have carbon is 4 so we have 4 into 12 hydrogen is 10 all this we will get theoretical air fuel ratio 15.5 now here we want to calculate the mass fraction of this that you can very easily do suppose I want here the volume fraction or volume percentage of CO2 so to just calculate mole fraction of CO2 the number of moles of CO2 divided by number of moles of CO2 plus number of moles of H2O plus we have number of moles of N2 that equal to number of moles of CO2 is 4 divided by 4 plus 5 4 plus 5 plus 24.4 will be mole fraction 11.96% and if you want to calculate the mass fraction then you have to multiply 4 with the molecular mass of carbon dioxide divided by all molecular mass the video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on google store and in this app we will cover all subjects involved in mechanical engineering for gate with every topic is associated with the video explain the concept and many more previous year questions I am myself having a 30 years of experience with this vast experience we have developed this app and how to solve the question in a very simple and the conceptual manner topics are continuously updated according to the get new pattern and the syllabus this course is ideal for all mechanical students for the forthcoming get examination we will make you fundamentally strong enough to attack any gate problems join the course directly from your mobile the link is given here you can view this on mobile as well as on desktop also 50% excess air we are using 150% of theoretical air here we have done this equation and we come to know theoretical value is 6.5 so same equation you have to continue here we have to write down this as c4 10 since we are using here 150 percent so, so here this a fraction or this 6.5 you have to multiply by 1.5 so we have 1.5 multiplied by a that is 6.5 multiplied by o2 plus 3.76 times n2 the coefficient here is 1 it means that we have a theoretical air if we have a 50 percent excess air then this value coefficient will be 1.5 and if we have 50 percent less air then this coefficient will be 0.5 On the right hand side we have to write down now here because of the excess air carbon will burn 100 percent to carbon dioxide so we have four times co2 Hydrogen will burn here because we have excess air present here. That will be 5 times H2O. This is how we can say our time. Otherwise, we can write this value as B times D times and you have to solve it. But unless it's a waste of time. What we are not sure is that how much oxygen will be present here. So, let's say here B times oxygen is present and P times nitrogen is present here we can calculate here the value of b and the value of p because we know the left hand side because of excess air carbon will burn to carbon dioxide is 100 percent guaranteed water hydrogen will be converted to water vapor is also guaranteed because of excess air we have a excess oxygen present plus the nitrogen present here now carbon already balanced here hydrogen already balanced here what we'll do we'll do the balance of oxygen first this is 1.5 multiplied by 6.5 on the right hand side we will come to this we have O2 balance so we have 4 plus this is not O2 so we can make it O2 as 5 by 2 plus we have B now solve this equation you will get value of B
this answer is 3.25 now similarly we can calculate for p here that is for nitrogen so for nitrogen the balance on the left hand side is 0.5 to 6.5 to 3.76 nitrogen is only p here so we have p equal to 26.66 we will write the reaction here so that we can find out again the percentage of this so we have C4 H10 1.5 into 6.5 continue 1.5 into 6.5 into O2 plus 3.76 N2 will give you 4 times CO2 plus 5 times H2O plus B times that is 3.25 times O2 plus 36.66 times N2 now here we want to calculate on mass basis percentage of oxygen in products of combustion be equal to since we are interested in the oxygen so oxygen is here so we have 3.25 is the number of moles spread by the molecular mass of oxygen is 32 divided by 4 moles of carbon dioxide which is 32 plus 12 is 44 plus 5 moles of water vapor which is 18 plus 3.25 moles of oxygen multiplied by molecular mass of oxygen is 32 plus 36.66 molecular mass of nitrogen is 28 on mass basis oxygen present in the products of combustion is 7.44 percent we ask you find dew point temperature in that case the dew point temperature you have to calculate for water vapor and we need to calculate here the mole fraction H2O simply you have to calculate here the number of moles of O that will be 5 moles we have 5 moles and here we have 4 moles of carbon dioxide 5 moles of water vapor plus 3.25 moles of oxygen plus 36.6 moles of nitrogen it will give you volume percentage percentage this will be 10.22 total pressure suppose we are equal to 1 bar then you have to calculate here the partial pressure of water vapor which is normally denoted as PV will be equal to the mole fraction of H2O multiplied by the total pressure P equal to 0 0.1022 multiplied by 1 will be same as 0 0.1022 bar and using the steam table you have to calculate the value of dew point temperature is equal to T sat at 0.1022 if we ask you what is the volume basis so propane is C3H8 is burned with 61% of excess air we will start our reaction like this we have C3H8 since we have 61% excess we will write this quantity as 1.61 times A oxygen whenever we have 1 mole of oxygen nitrogen mole is present we will produce E quantity this is a complete combustion because of excess air here so we have 3 times 2 plus H8 means we have complete combustion is 4 H2O plus B times O2 plus P times N2 now here we don't know what is the percentage of oxygen and nitrogen so we'll just balance here first o2 
is 1 point times a says o2 is 3 this one is o2 will be 2 this will be plus b write for n2 we have 1.61 3.76 times a equal to as we'll do here complete conversion so we have c3 h8 plus a times o2 plus 3.76 n2 will give you c times co2 plus 4 times h2o the complete conversion we have 3.76 multiplied by a n2 so we have to just find out here value of a so we'll equate the o2 and we'll come back to the original equation we have a equal to o2 is 3 and this will be equal to 4 o2 is 2 it means that we have a equal to what 5 complete combustion now we know the value of a so we'll go back to this equation and we can solve for b so we have b equal to 1.61 multiplied by 5 minus 5 3 plus 2 minus 5 so we can get the value of b equal to 0.05 now we can calculate p also equal to 1.61 and 2 divided by 3.76 divided by a and we got a equal to 5 30.27 this reaction is now can be written completely and now if you are interested to calculate the mass fraction of co2 or o2 or nitrogen that you can do very well your we reaction is c3 h8 plus 1.61 multiplied by a o2 plus 3.76 n2 give you 3 times co2 2 times h2o plus 3.05 times o2 plus 30.27 is we have 3 moles of carbon dioxide, 4 moles of water vapor, 3.05 moles of oxygen and 30.27 moles of nitrogen. Now here we will take propane burn with 30% deficient air. So 30% less air means whatever the ratio we are getting for theoretical we are supplying less air. So this number will be equal to 0 0.7 0 0.7 means 30 percent less and 61 means 61 percent higher so less air means we have 1 minus 0 0.3 that equal to 0 0.7 so this chemically correct air fuel ratio this coefficient will be equal to 0 0.7 so we get c3 h8 plus 7 Already we know this value for complete combustion is 5 so I will write this is 5 will be O2 plus 3.76 N2 I know that there is an incomplete combustion so 100% conversion of carbon into carbon dioxide is not possible so I don't know how much dioxide will produce the hydrogen will burn here completely will be 4 times H2O we have an additional quantity here, carbon dioxide is present. So let's say we have DCO, oxygen will not present, already we have less air. So here we have to find out value of B, value of D and P. For this one we will take the balance of carbon. On the left hand side we have carbon is 3, on the right hand side we have carbon is B plus D. For oxygen balance we have 0 0.7 into 5 is 3.5. On the right hand side we have B plus 2 plus D by 2. 
So we have two equation here b plus d equal to 3 and twice b plus d is equal to 3. Using this we can find out the value of b and the value of d. Once we know the value of b and d we can find out the value of p. Whenever we have a less air carbon dioxide partially burn. Carbon will burn to partially carbon dioxide and P is equal to 3.5 into 3.76 is 13.16. Final reaction is C3 H18 plus 3.5 times O2 plus 3.76 times N2. Since here B is equal to 0, so we will not write your CO2, we will only write 4 times H2O. We have 3 times CO plus 13.16 at starting, idling and the low speed operation, the carburetor will always supply for rich mixture. Correct. For a spark ignition engine, the equivalence ratio phi, which we have defined as phi equal to mass of air upon mass of fuel stichometric by mass of air upon mass of fuel actual. This is equivalence ratio ignition engine the equivalence ratio of phi for a mixture entering the combustion chamber has the values for phi less than 0 for idling and for peak power for idling peak power we require more quantity of fuel so mass of fuel will be more and the mass of air will be less. In that case, the actual air fuel ratio, because the mass of fuel is less, is greater than mass of air upon mass of fuel stichometric. So, in this case, the denominator is more as compared to numerator. We have phi value should be less than one. That is for idling and peak power, we have equivalence ratio of phi is less than 1. So in this case, the choice D, which is phi is less than 1 for both idling and the peak power condition is correct choice. If the air fuel ratio of the mixture in petrol engine is more than 15 is to 1, so 15 is to 1 here we'll consider the stichometric air fuel ratio. And we are using here more, it means that we have excess air present. If excess air is present here, then O2 will be present. But the hydrocarbon will completely burn, so choice B is wrong. CO2 reduce will not, CO2 will completely burn. And there is no chance of carbon monoxide produce. Because we have already the excess oxygen is present. In that case, the NX quantity will going to reduce. The choice A is correct choice. C3H8 is burned in an oxygen atmosphere with 10% deficient oxygen. Means we have to take coefficient of A equal to 0.9 with respect to the stichometric requirement. Assuming no hydrocarbons in the products of combustion, the volume percentage that is the mole fraction you have to calculate of CO in the products of combustion. First here will burn it completely. So we have C3 H8 plus A O2 plus 3.76 N2. This is a complete combustion that is stichometric. So we have 3 times of CO2 plus 4 times of H2O plus P times of N2. So let's solve here. Carbon is already balanced here. We'll balance only for oxygen. So we have A, 3, 2. So we have A equal to 5. 
and now we'll write down here 10 percent deficient same reaction here c3 x8 9 times a a equal to 5 o2 plus 3.76 n2 b quantity of co2 d co already we have proved here that hydrogen balance must be complete so we have four times of h2o plus p times of n2 okay let we have balance here for carbon carbon we have three equal to b Balance will go for hydrogen. Hydrogen is already balanced. Therefore, will go for oxygen. 0.9 into 5 is 4.5. D. D by 2. 2. H2. Now, we will get two equation here and that can be solved. So, this is 4.5 and this two will be 2.5 so we have b plus d by 2 equal to 2.5 so we have two times of b plus d is equal to 5 is one equation and we have b plus d equal to 3 we can solve these two equation we get here b is equal to 2 and d is equal to 1 and we'll calculate here p for n2 so we have p is equal to 0.9 into 5 3.76 0.92 now we have to write down final reaction one more time we have c3 And 5 O2 plus 3.76 equal to 2 times plus D CO plus 4 times H2O P times that is 16.9 what we are interested that volume percentage means you have to calculate mole fraction volume percentage so will be same as mole fraction of co equal to number of moles of co that equal to 1 divided by number of moles of rest products of combustion is 2 plus 1 plus 4 plus 16.9 4 point one eight percent in order to to burn 1 kilogram of methane completely the minimum number of kilograms of oxygen required and we are given the atomic weight since we are interested here only for oxygen calculation I will prefer my first method to solve this that is CH4 plus O2 will produce CO2 plus H2O so write down the reaction first now take the balance here this is H4 so this must be equal to twice H2 and here 1 O2 and here 1 O2 so this one is twice O2 So reaction is balanced. Carbon is 1, hydrogen is 2, oxygen is 4, 2 plus 2 is 4. This is simple reaction. Now here C is 12, hydrogen is 4, that will be equal to 16. This is 32 and this is 64. To burn 16 kg of methane will require 64 kg of oxygen. So to burn 1 kg of methane, we require 64 by 16 that is 4 kg of oxygen choice b correct